Good afternoon to you all from the commentary box here. Uh, talking to Kevin just a moment ago, he said, I think this is going to be a real classic. And certainly the atmosphere here and the setting could not be better. It certainly couldn't, Brian. The two biggest cities outside of London playing each other. Uh, two great sets of fans. Um, I think at the moment, if, you, if you're having a contest, the Villa fans are singing a little bit more and that, but maybe, maybe the United fans are just feeling the pressure a bit. But a tremendous game in prospect, and if it lives up to half its billing, Brian, Brian we're in for a great day. Just thinking, I've done a few cup finals here, and you've played a cup, few cup finals here. I can't ever recall a noisier cup final uh, than this one. Ah, I don't know if it's the time of the kickoff with it being a little bit different, but it's been going on now for about an hour and a half. We've been sat up here, best part of 90 minutes, and uh, they've never stopped. And I think the pre-match uh, entertainment they do now, where they get a, a guy on a mic to, to wind them up a little bit, I th with a little bit of friendly banter, it all helps. Well, the team's being presented to our guest of honour on the left there, the one and only Nat Lofthaus. Nat Lofthaus, OBE, guest of honour, the Lion of Vienna. And he played such a fantastic part as an Indian international in a famous game against Austria back in 52. He played, of course, in the 53 FA Cup final, the Matthews final. He was on the losing day then. He played in the 1958 Cup final against Manchester United for Bolton, and he splattered Harry Gregg into the back of the net, I remember, scored, and Bolton finished as winners. But all through it, Nat Lofthaus, a real gentleman, and you couldn't find a worthier guest of honour. You can see how well the players are responding to having a former player themselves as a guest of honour, Kevin. Yeah, I think Paul McGrath, probably one of the few, could have played against him, actually. <laughs> Don't mean it unkindly, but uh, he is a tremendous uh, ambassador for the game of football. Gordon McKeague there, also the president of the Football League. And Penny Hughes, the president of Coca-Cola, Great Britain and Ireland. And David Dent, the secretary of the Football League, making up the uh, welcoming party there. I suppose we're never going to say they look terrified, but in fact the players do look remarkably composed and relaxed about it all. Steve Bruce, the uh, captain of Manchester United. Mark Hughes and Dennis Irwin. Well, is the glorious treble on for Manchester United? Is it to become a reality? Uh, this truly is the first day of big decision. There's Liz Seeley. In for Peter Schmeichel, Ryan Giggs, of course. The FA Cup and the Premiership. Now, I wonder what sort of language you've got here. Andrei Kanchelskis from the Ukraine. Roy Keane. And Eric Cantona. Well, Paul Ince. Powerhouse through that midfield. And Alec Ferguson. Old buddies there. The FA Cup, the Premiership, will really take their turn today. The first leg of the treble is up for grabs in the Coca-Cola Cup final. Bobby Charlton, the director, of course, of Manchester United, and one of their grandest sons. What an occasion. And now we await the national anthem. Referee is Keith Cooper, Pontypridd. Let's just have a quick uh, word down on the touchline. Gary Newborn has got Dennis Law with him. 
Yes, one of Manchester United's greats. He'll have a definite view on how this match is going to go, Dennis Law. Oh, I think if United are going to win the treble, I would say that this game today will probably be the hardest one of the lot. And if they play to their strengths, then they could go, and if they win today, I think they'll go and win the treble. But in saying that, Villa have not played particularly well in the last few weeks, but they have got key players on the side and players who can win the game on their own. I think it's got to be an absolute classic of the game. Everybody talks about gigs and players like that quite rightly, but what about Daly and Atkinson when he's really on court? As I say, Villa have got players on the side, Saunders, Daly and Atkinson, Daly themselves, and they, they're on their own, they could win the game. But I think we've got to see Cantona today and Giggs, and I think with the blend of skill that they've got on both sides, I think, honestly, we're in for a classic today. All right, let's uh, look at the teams that are going to provide that classic. Aston Villa first, three successive defeats behind the remember. Ron Atkinson decided something has to be done. Ray Houghton and Gary Parker are missing from the midfield. He's also provided the big team surprise. 19-year-old Graham Fenton, only two previous starts, no goals. He gets one of the striking places. It's a formation that sees Kevin Richardson and Andy Townsend as the men to give a hard, competitive edge to Villa's midfield with Daly Atkinson on the right, Tony Daly on the left to provide pace and penetration with Fenton, I think, playing more or less as an attacking midfielder just behind Dean Saunders. Well, Manchester United feel their expected side, that is, once Andre Kanchelskis has shaken off an injury, Lee Sharp, who scored a couple against Arsenal in midweek, is a sub. Of course, Les Seeley comes into goal in place of the suspended Peter Schmeichel, his first start of the season. Uh, the usual United formation, such power through their midfield. I've got a feeling that'll be the crucial battle between Paul Ince and Roy Keane against Villas, Richardson and Townsend. And like Villa, terrific pace down the flanks with Kanchelskis and Giggs. And of course, that headline grabber Cantona in attack alongside Mark Hughes. The subs, well, for Aston Villa, Neil Cox, Ray Houghton and goalkeeper Nigel Spink. And for Manchester United, Lee Sharp, Brian McClare and the reserve keeper Gary Walsh. The referee comes from Pontypridd, Keith Cooper. His linesman making up that team, John Elvin of Norwich and Robert Harris of Oxford. What about this man? He's a little bit special. Um, he's a tremendous talent. Uh, people won't be surprised to hear me say that. And with the talent of his comes little side effects. You're bound to have them. It's part of the character. But he's certainly had a fantastic season. And I think, as Ray Wilkins said, it, it's about time we got back to talking about Cantona, the footballer, because he has given the game in this country something even a little bit more special than any other foreign player of the past has done. We've had some good ones. So that's also down to him now, isn't it? If we're going to talk about his football, we've got to... Uh, he's going to produce it for us. And there's Graham Fenton, a 19-year-old from Wall's End. And Villa then attacking the goal to our left. Claret and Blue. Manchester United on their change away strip. Yellow and green. Richardson, Atkinson, Townsend. United just pulling plenty back at the moment. Townsend making this little break down the left here. It was not a bad little cross there from Tony Daly and the whistle's gone for a free kick to Manchester United fascinating imponderable really just how Manchester United will react to the storms really that have been raging around them three sendings off in four games Schmeichel once Cantona twice and of course Blackburn's hot breath on their necks at the moment and how will Villa react to three successive defeats Last one at home to Oldham. Teal gets that one away. Ron Atkinson actually came out in one of the quotes of the season. He said, you heard that booing at the end? I started it. That's how uh, depressed he was with uh, Villa's performance that day. But here's Kanchelskis. Keane battling away. It's Fenton who got a header in there. A valuable one. He'll be pleased to have got that in. Kanchelskis again. Look at this. Touched on the game by Keane, Kanchelskis is in there, Hughes waiting in the middle, and Atkinson getting back quickly, as Irwin came right up from the full-back position on the far side. A terrific start to this game, both teams already had one attack, 
and uh, you can see from the kickoff they're, they're just going to go at each other. It could be the classic that Dennis Law said it would be. Biggs fisted away there by Bosnich. Cantona spotting Kanchelskis. Long range shot, maybe no. Hughes playing it around. Villa struggling to get the ball out of their own penalty area at the moment. Staunton and now Daly. Made in for Saunders. Richardson. Now Daly Nackleton on the far side. Noticeable that Giggs has come back to help out with Irwin and Giggs now starting one of those runs. Richardson cutting it out. Dean Saunders. Fenters in the middle. Townsend's come up as well. Richardson. Plenty of Wembley experience there. Earl Barrett. Playing some nice stuff here. Fenton going all the way through. And actually he seemed to fall over Steve Bruce and Keith Cooper. Yeah, yeah I think he to go on. I think Keith Cooper there played the he lost the ball, his touch had taken him away, but actually a lot I've seen a lot of referees give these sort of things. Just got a quick reaction from uh, Ron Atkinson there. I think Ron thought that they were a little unlucky not to get something. What's going to be very interesting, Brian, is just where Fenton goes because they're attempting to let Dean Saunders employ the whole of the back four of Man United. And Fenton, one of them's going to have to come out and put Fenton up. And they don't like doing that, either Bruce or Pallister. So that's one interesting point here. Back to Bosnich. Richardson. Townsend. Steve Staunton. McGrath. That's a nifty one. Now Gates. Well stopped by Richardson though. Got the build up to uh, Saunders. Here's Fenton again. It's a driving force through those midfield, he and Keane. That was a poor ball by Cantona standards. I think Ron Atkinson looks as though he's gone for power against power through that midfield with the likes of Townsend and uh, Richardson against Keane and uh, against Hicks. Yeah, the one thing that they have got, probably Man United, if they've got an edge at all, it is on sheer pace. And here's one man who's got plenty of it now, Giggs, but Kanchelskis, Cantona, and that's, you can, straight away you can see Villa trying to pass it through Man United. And I think that's what they've got to do. They haven't got the real pace that, that United have got, and they've got to go for the more sophisticated way through. Well, Hughes dispossessing Richardson there. Here's Cantona. Keane's gone up ahead of him. Ince is available too. And on this side is Kanchelskis, who can really attack Staunton, who's had some problems injury-wise. And they might well feel that they can attack Staunton, who's a really good fullback. But if he's not totally fit, Kanchelskis might just be the man to exploit it. Paul Parker with the throw. Kanchelskis. Eric Cantona. Still towards Giggs. Hardly the man you'd expect to be in there getting winning headers against this back four, but uh, he's an all round talented player. He's not just got pace, he's not just a good use of the ball, a good cross of the ball, but he's also a brave little fella as well. It's a good cross from Cantona. The last person you'd think would get on the end of it was Giggs, but he manages to do it. Bosnich with the kick. It's driving forward again. Hughes, Hughes! A little dummy! And in the end, Richardson did a terrific job for Aston Villa just on the edge of his own penalty area. Oh, and a back heel there by Fenton. Not the best of things to do right there. Giggs, a little ball. He tried to play Irwin in. A uh, real strong run from Hughes there. And I, I don't know whether it was Richardson or even McGrath in the end. Possibly the two of them had to stop him. He is a very strong man. 
uh, terrific, terrific player for Man United. A very important part of, of, of their game is getting it into him and him getting hold of the ball. In fact, that Coca-Cola are continuing their sponsorship of this event for another three years. So that's very good news for football. That's just been announced. And I would think they would be delighted, one, with the exposure they're getting, but also with the quality of the game we're seeing here so far. One of this competition's had a few uh, guises in its time, starting as the old League Cup back in 1961. But now it's the Coca-Cola Cup. And as I say, it'll be that for another three years. Sean Teal finding Steve Staunton. Hit long. Townsend chasing this one. Keane, who's got a terrific motor on him, though. Again, we'll be looking for Keane to make these long runs that he makes, and he does make them from deep and they're hard to be picked he's hard to be picked up and that's what he'll be looking to do and at Wembley invites that sort of run. Kanchelskis, oh what a lovely touch from Cantona. Kanchelskis again in for Cantona again. Kanchelskis chasing this one but Cantona offered him a little too much to do there. He's quick Brian but he's not quite that quick. <laughs> he gave him an awful lot to do with that pass. Parker with the throw. Cantona Look at that. And the ball into Hughes. And in the end, Giggs went in there, maybe but not quite as positively as uh, Alec Ferguson would have wanted him to, and the ball coming through to Mark Bosnich. But it was lying loose there just for a moment or two. Another great ball in here from Cantona, and it's into his feet, but unfortunately it goes through his legs. But he just uses his upper body strength, though, Barrett, to see Giggs off. Up goes Pallister, wins it in the air. Up goes Townsend, wins it. Alistair again. This time it's Richardson. Townsend. Daly. Swift challenge by Innes. Wasn't a lot of room to spare then. Fenton was bearing down on Seeley. Plenty of work for Bosnich at one end, but not at the moment very much for Les Seedy. 36 years old, terrific character, Mr. Angry. He's won one or two things with Manchester United already, including a cup winner's medal here against Crystal Palace. Cup winner's cup medal too against Barcelona. And he won't lack for confidence, will he? Les Seedy. No, he's a terrific, confident character. And I'd much as I'd look to have someone of his experience to put back in goals. I mean, of course, they'll miss Schmeichel because he starts a lot of their attacks off. But to have someone this experience to put in must be a real bonus for Alex Ferguson. In a throw. Steve Bruce. To see me. There's Cantona just getting ahead of Richardson. Judge that perfectly. Townsend. For Daly, he's got real pace. Inch was aware of that. Nipped that in the butt straight away. Here's Cantona again, just taking it away from Richardson. Sean Teal will get there first, just a fraction before Kanchelskis. Certainly, when they played up at Old Trafford earlier this season and uh, United won 3 1, they put Earl Barrett very closely on Cantona and he played him well, even though Cantona scored a couple of times. Just have a look in a moment, Kevin, and tell me what Villa are doing with Cantona this time. In the meantime, it's Kanchelskis trying to play it in early. Well, they're not giving him the freedom of the park, Brian, but they certainly... They took something away from themselves when they did that with Earl Barrett. They lost the shape a little bit, and although Earl Barrett did a good job, from the team point of view, it didn't really function very well for Villa. 
and today they've started off much better by getting on with their own game and not taking anything away from themselves tactically. Good run here. Atkinson went through the challenge there. And Fenton, can he just poke it through for Atkinson? Oh, the Manchester United defensive door was closing all the time. And Graham Fenton only 19. A bit of trainee. Atkinson had no doubts about him being uh, mentally ready for this one. It's Cantona trying to bring Giggs into it. Now with Hughes to hold this one. It's with Giggs. It's all Barrett's header which put Manchester United back in possession. Barrett then finally scrambling the ball over the line for the throw to United. Earl Barrett must wonder what he's done wrong. Last time he had to mark Cantona, today he's got to mark Giggs. There's, there's no easy people to mark in this Man United side. Sticking very close to Giggs. Richardson watching Cantona here. This is for Bruce to chase. Giggs doing well, and Hughes just across that six-yard line and just beyond the bar post. Well, Alec Ferguson and his team on the bench thought that was going to be the opening goal, and it couldn't have been more than a yard or so in it. This is a terrific run. He dummies to cross, and El Barrett buys it, goes inside. I thought he was going to get a penalty here at one stage, because Darian Axon dives in, but he gets his cross in, and just the faintest of touches from Hughes, and just wide. It could have gone in. A bit unlucky, really. From the other side of the field. That will show you how close it was. I think Addy actually missed it. Cantona was there as well. But a terrific break from United, and that's that's what they do. They do it so quickly. Richardson. Cantona. Parker. Stopped by Staunton. Where's Cantona? Oh, he shimmied away from Townsend. Tried to pick up Giggs. Here's Parker. Cantona. The fans giving him a boo, but at the moment he's running it. He is, he's got the freedom of the park, but he's got the freedom in what I would call not too dangerous area. And I, and I think Villa are right to do this, because when you put a, a man on Cantona, it fires him up and, and he sees it as a personal challenge. And he usually plays better. I, th I think they're doing right. He hasn't hurt them too much at the moment. Pallister. Quarter of an hour's gone. Nil-nil. Richardson. On Roy Keane. Yeah, just a little bit late here. And, and Keith Cooper straight Keith away. Straight into the back there. Stops the game and says, hey, we're having none of that. Because well, this game doesn't need that. There's so much ability out there, so much skill, so much pace. And uh, he's right to stop that one. In the World Cup, that'll be a red card this summer. When the South Americans get up against each other, there could be about four people left on the park if they strictly adhere to those rules. Parker. Bruce. To Roy King. Picks up Canton. Well, that was a, a handball and a deliberate one there by Paul Ince. The referee, Keith Cooper, going to have a word with Ince about that. It was just instinctive, Brian. It was, it was in an innocuous area in the middle of the field, but it was, he just had a little word as he went by, some good refereeing there. Here's Richardson for Aston Villa. A little chip by him, Bruce knocking it away, Pallister helping it on, up towards Hughes, Cantona, a touch, what a beauty. He couldn't quite pick it up, and uh, Sean Teal gets it back to Bosnich. 
with a touch by Staunton. Smashing football being played here this afternoon. Fenton. Richardson. Chicken by him towards Saunders, but too high, and he was being well watched by Pallister in any case. McGrath gets it away. The difference at the moment between the two sides is they've got Saunders up front, who's not a natural sort of player to hold things up for them. And Man United have got Hughes. And uh, at the moment, it's working better that way. It's more natural. It's the way Man United play normally. Whereas Saunders is not getting in the game as much as he would like. And that, that's because he's really been asked to plough along for up front. Steve Bruce. Manchester United, knocked away in the end by Dalian Atkinson. I, I'm, I'm wondering if he shouldn't have uh, volleyed that one. It, it was a little bit low to head, but it, he, he made the decision quickly, and, and a good save from Bosnich, who didn't go down too early. Had he done, it would have been over. Irwin's throw for Manchester United. Kicks. Fenton. Gets it back to Barrett. Bruce Parker Steve Bruce picks up Cantona. This is the Roy Keane incident. Yeah, so, terrific so. one two he plays with Mark Hughes, I think. And he gets the ball back. And I just wonder if he could have let this come down and volley it. But he decides to dive and edit, probably because Earl Barrett was there. And Bosnich did very well. They're the runs that uh, Keane's going to make all day. And he's not going to get cramped, but he won't get tired because he's got a terrific engine on him. Seely. Sean Teal getting there for four. Mark Hughes. Hughes having a second bite. He turns so well with such strength. Getting support there by Ince. A few feet flying around there. And Fenton, the 19 year old, in no way is going to be intimidated. Top ball. Teal gets it forward up towards Saunders. There was a prime example of what I meant before, that Saunders can't really get hold of that boy, he can only flick it on, but there's no-one else there. Keane. No foul, said the referee. Bosnich plays a dangerous game, as we remember in that semi-final against Tranmere. Came flying out there. The referee decided... He indicated a dive by the Manchester United player. It's a great ball here from Irving, and again, that run from Keane. And I think he's very unlucky not to get at least a free kick here. He gets a touch, and I think Bosnich tried to stop, but his momentum took him through him. Cut out by Daly. Maybe Daly can attack Manchester United now. It's left with Staunton to do that, crossing the ball in towards Daly Nacken on the far side. And Irwin runs it into touch to uh, a corner for Aston Villa. I can't remember if uh, Les Seeley's actually handled the ball yet, Brian. He, he's certainly had three or four kicks, but I'm, I can't remember him handling it yet. I don't think he has. 21 minutes gone. Well, Sean Teal is up. Dangerous man from this sort of position. Practiced a lot of corners yesterday at Villa, down at uh, Bissam Abbey. 
and they were Ron Atkinson was saying I want some movement from players inside the penalty and there's plenty of that at the moment they're bobbing and weaving and ducking that wasn't a particularly good corner but they'll get another go yeah they've got plenty of height in there and that's why he's maybe worked so much on them because uh, although Man United have got height as well Villa probably have slight edge there with the likes of McGrath Atkinson Teal Townsend is not small either McGrath's at the near post with Atkinson Teal is waiting to make his run, so too is Andy Townsend. This is a wicked one, curling in and touched away. Well, he certainly got a touch there, did Seeley. I think that's what he tried to do with the first corner. I'm sure, again, Ron Atkins said, hey, let's, let's get things whipped in at Les Seeley early, early on. He hasn't played many first-team games for a long while. Well, that was it to perfection. It really was a good corner. And yet you'd be surprised if it beat a keeper of his standing. Staunton again with the corner for Aston Villa, 0-0. Driven in this time, Fenton knocking it in, could have gone anywhere. United will be delighted it fell at the feet of Dennis Irwin. It's something at last for the Villa fans to cheer. But here comes Giggs. Daly. Free kick for Aston Villa. Foul on Tony Daly. <laughs> Halfway through the first half. Saunders. Keen read that well. Down the line to Hughes. Oh, delightful play by Hughes. And look at Giggs. Kanchelskis flitting on the far side now. Cantona. Beaten to the challenge by Andy Townsend. Saunders away on the right. Atkinson away on the left now. Saunders going past Bruce. He's got Tony Daly up alongside him, and here's Steve Staunton. A left foot shot that hits straight at Paul Parker. And Parker gets it back to Seeley. Teal into touch. Saw out of the corner of his eye that Cantona was lurking. foot hard down just to keep in this game at the moment I think there's no doubt about it the movement from Man United off the ball is better but um, I, I, Villa are coming into it a little bit for me they are indeed there's a chance now it's a goal by Daniel Atkinson Well, he's, he scores some priceless goals, does Atkinson. Including two in the semi-finals at crucial moments against Tranmere Rovers. Great ball from Saunders, and he just tucks it round Seeley, and Steve Bruce just can't get there. Townsend knocks it in, a little flick, very similar to the one that called it for Beardsley, but instead of hitting it, takes it on. When we play QPI, he takes it on and he sticks it in. And that really sets this game up, Brian. Aston Villa 1, Manchester United 0. Let's see how United respond now. Well, Daly, who can really attack them. Saunders. Richardson. 
had it with everybody back. Well, he said he was looking forward to playing here before the game, and he, he, he'll enjoy this. We look at it again, it, United, very little chance to defend it, because everything happened so quickly for them, all one touch. And then, this is where scorers have got an eye for a goal. I mean, anyone else might have hit it with his left foot. He's just dinked it over the keeper, and Villa are on the way, maybe, to a major shock here. Well, he scored those two late, late goals against Tranmere. He scored a really valuable goal against Arsenal earlier in the competition when Villa won 1-0 at Highbury. And he's really opened up the game now as Giggs hits a long ball in. Bosnich is picking cherries. Alec Ferguson there, uh, he, he'll, he'll wonder what they've done wrong because they have actually dominated the game, Brian, to be fair, up to that point. They've looked the most likely team to score and then suddenly... One bit of genius, a good ball in, a good flick, and they find themselves up against the wall a little bit. Hicks. Richardson is down. But Fenton is on the ball now for Villa. Well, Richardson has really worked so hard in those midfield areas. He's such a competitive player. Just, I was saying, though, that uh, Villa were needing to have their foot hard down just to keep in the play. Yeah, I didn't really agree with that, Brian. I was about to say that when they actually scored. But I felt the last five minutes there, they were starting to just get a little bit more in what I call the last third of the field, where they're going to create chances, maybe. And, of course, as, that, as I was about to say that, they scored. But um, it certainly was a little bit against the run of play. Here it is again. I think we'll see this a lot of times. And he just gets a, a march on Bruce, and of course he's never going to catch him, so then Bruce goes for the goal line. He doesn't get the best of contacts. Off his shin, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's enough. For him, it's the goal of the season. Let's have a word from Gary Newborn on the uh, touchline. Well, the interesting thing, Brian, is that the Villa bench have been yelling at Atkinson to run into slots, to be in the right positions for any balls that come down. He's often turned his back and been looking in the other direction and got the uh, Villa bench rather frustrated. But suddenly, he got into the right position. As you say, a beautiful ball, a beautiful move, and he scores the goal. Fanchelskis playing it in. Fenton knocking it away. And Fenton a shot, finishing... Well, in amongst the Man United fans, almost behind that Bosnich goal. Yeah, he'll be disappointed he didn't hit the target there. Great run from Cancels, he had three men on him at one stage, and a good ball in, which they defended quite well, but not really, it's just a flick from Fenton, actually. And uh, Cantona just lifted his head up, and uh, he won't be pleased with that effort when he sees it again. Alistair versus Saunders. Richardson. Daly on the left, closed down quickly by Parker, but Daly still gets the ball through to Townsend. Good play here by Tony Daly, and then just lost his footing. He started off quite brightly as Tony Daly, and he's given a few more problems than I think Alex Ferguson thought he may. And uh, he's certainly got the pace to cause them problems, and there's not many players in the league have got that sort of pace. To cause Man United problems, he's one of them. Bruce to Pallister. Diggs faced by Barrett. Took the difficult route, was outnumbered, but the clearance goes straight to another United player as Ince finds Irwin and Giggs. Starts it up again. It's a corner this time off Dalian Atkinson. Atkinson working really hard. I think uh, Ron Atkinson will be really pleased with his performance so far. Not just because of the goal. He's actually worked his socks off in that midfield, along with Townsend and Richardson and the young lad. Kachowskis. 
Cantona just flicking it in with a little bit of arrogance there. A great jump though by Staunton and another one by Staunton, but the flag is up for an offside. Possibly against Hughes, possibly against Cantona who came in uh, to the six yard area. Yes, it was probably just Kanchelskis coming back from an offside position. Very tight decision, Brian. I think that they've got a thankless task these days, the linesman, because when you see replays, you sometimes approve right, sometimes approve wrong. The one thing that certainly improves is how difficult a job it is. Irwin. Richardson. Atkinson. Villa lying eighth in the Premiership. This is their only chance, really, of getting into Europe next season. Kanchelskis. Keane. And Irwin. Fans on that side felt there was a handball by Barrett. Linesman's on this side, and uh, the referee wasn't in the best position to see it. But 15,000 people can't be wrong, though. Can't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's another corner for Manchester United. Kicks will take it. Cantona at the near post. Palace is in there too. Hughes at the back post, Keane, Bruce and Ince ready to launch themselves from the edge of the box. Now what sort of corner will Giggs deliver? Straight in there to the arms of Bosnich. Young man from Sydney, Australia. In fact his parents are over here from Australia to watch him today. Certainly be very proud of what he's achieved in the last two seasons in English football. Right? It's been a revelation. Started at Manchester United, of course. He had three games at Manchester United, and there were work permit problems, and he went back to Australia and was persuaded to come and try again. Hughes getting off to the far side there, with Irwin coming in quickly, but some excellent tracking back that time by Atkinson. Townsend first to spot the possibility there. Still falls though for Roy Keane. It's Bruce. Short deal. Interesting phase of the game, really, with ten minutes to go to half time. I mean, if Villa were to get another one, that would be a mountain to climb for Man United. They would really feel the world's against them. Well, look at the space here for young Graham Fenton. Good throw from Staunton. Atkinson. Richardson brought down by Hughes. Free kick. Ten minutes to half time. with the free kick. Daly Atkinson nodding it in. Saunders there, looking to get on the end of it. Might still, no, Bruce got that away. Parker helping on to Cantona. Gives it away. Bruce hitting it long. Testing the pace of Kanchelskis here. Staunton in for two. Richardson. Trying 
to shake off Richardson, but it's not been an easy job this afternoon. Free kick to Manchester United, quickly taken by Pallister. Now it's with Roy Keane. Mark Hughes. And Keane again. Slight miss kick there by Barrett, but no harm done. Except that Manchester United get a throw. on the way I fancy Parker's never scored for Manchester United excellent Teal strike well. excellent strike I don't, I don't think he got a deflection I think he just cut, cut the neck off it a little bit wasn't that far away was it Brian looking at that camera I think that even, it looked even closer than I first thought it was what a time to get your first goal for Man United that falls for Kanchelskis Teal. United have twice beaten uh, Villa this season. 2 1 at Villa Park and a 3 1 at Old Trafford. I think in the first game at Villa Park, I think Lee Sharp got a couple of goals, didn't he? And they're probably glad to see him sat on the bench when the squad teams were announced today. Free kick to Manchester United. Ryan Giggs towards Bruce. And Giggs again. Playing it early this time. Teal whacking it away. Parker. There by Townsend and Staunton in between them, they blocked the cross. Parker to Ince. Cantona tried to knock it down, Keane tried to get in there, and Fenton did really well. Except that he held on to it long and was dispossessed by Hughes. It comes on to Kanchelskis, and here's Paul Parker. Now lining up in the middle for Parker, but he's got problems of his own, and he loses out to Steve Staunton. Now Daly can attack them. Saunders has pulled away to the far side. Daly's gone that way. Support from Atkinson as well, and from Fenton. Daly getting in there. And might you just get that one away? And then find Cantona. Hit long from one side of the field to the other, and perfect for Kanchelskis. It's amazing, Brian. What's actually happening here before our very eyes is, is Aston Villa are doing to Man United what Man United normally do to teams. They're actually sitting back, denying them a lot of space, and then when they win the ball, breaking very quick on them. Yes, Saunders. Four minutes to go to half time. Fenton. Atkinson. Richardson. Had a terrific first half, Kevin Richardson. Felt the weight of Vince's challenge there and lost his boot. Good fair challenge though, Brian, and the sort of thing that you've got to have in football. Terrific clash. No one hurt, just both went for the ball. Saunders, Townsend. Let's have a quick word with Dennis Law down on the touchline. 
Well, well, Dennis, United obviously paying for missing two good chances, but how do you think they're playing overall? I think they've been playing not too bad. Uh, up until the goal, in fact, I thought that United had been the better side. They had created uh, the most chances, and a bit unlucky. Keem was a bit unlucky, and so was uh, Mark Hughes. But the goal that uh, Atkinson scored was absolutely superb. Uh, the way that it was made, and then he ran to the keeper, just knocked it in. But really, United have still created not. I think Villa have sort of, uh, you know, hustling United, but even so, I think United are still playing quite well. But Villa uh, at the moment, excellent goal. Yes, here's Cantona. Everybody except uh, Les Seedy well into the uh, Villa half at the moment. It's Gary Pallister making the run. And uh, the free kick's been given. But the foul by Earl Barrett. Manchester United and their fans wonder whether it might have been inside the box. I have to see this one again, Brian, because uh, I didn't really think it was a foul. I thought it seemed shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, to it was just two, two strong men battling each other. But actually, if it was a foul, it looked... Well, he certainly fell in the box. It's a dangerous position to concede a free kick for. And just two minutes before half-time, it'd be a great time for United to get back in the game and a real body blow for Villa. They'll be wanting to defend this one. Irwin's good at this sort of situation. Cantona fancies it. Giggs, of course, fancies it, although he's moving away now. It looks like it might be either Dennis Irwin or Eric Cantona. It's Irwin, and it hits the wall. Oh, and then a wild clearance by Tony Daly concedes a quite unnecessary corner. Yeah, we look this at this again, kick. and yeah, it's, I don't know, a difficult one. Well, it's a corner for Manchester United, Ryan Giggs, curling it in. And Daly and Atkinson gets it away, picks up Saunders. And look at the chase forward now. Fenton is there as well, and almost got on the end of it, might still. He and Atkinson then getting a little tangled with each other. But just for a moment, then, Villa looked to be uh, really in there again. They're breaking so quick on them, and they're really playing them at their own game, and they're doing it very well. Here's Daly. Here's the cross. Oh, my goodness, and Pallister very nearly put that straight into the path of Saunders. Hughes. The last minutes of the first half. A little to be added on, but not much. kick to United. I don't think anybody really knew what for Brian there. But anyway. Keen to Kanchelskis. It's with a header. Hughes. For Giggs, trying to get Cantona in, but the pass wasn't accurate enough. Sean Teal picking it out for Aston Villa, and then Staunton the long ball towards Saunders, out number two to one, and it's Bruce with the header. Parker up to Cantona, half time whistle. A terrific first half with good technical football, and of course, the goal that has surprised a lot of people. Daly Atkinson, the scorer. Let's have a word with Ron Atkinson. Ron, your comments on that half, a great yeah, scoreline, well, obviously. For yeah, you. we're pleased with the scoreline. Tactically, we've tried to frustrate them, which we think we've done, and we think we've got enough pace to play on the break, providing we're brave enough to keep the ball when we win it back. Thank you. Brian, are United a bit of greed in that dressing room that you won goal down? We are a little bit. I think the lads have played really well in that first half. But you're always saying semi-finals and finals, you can't afford a lapse in concentration. And we did, we got caught on a short break kick and they go through and nice move and that's the score. What's the message that Alex Ferguson has been drumming home for the players before the second half? Well, the lads have got to try and keep the shape and a good passing movements and uh, just try and up the pace just that little bit more, a few more through balls rather than uh, square passing and that. 
you know, just try and up the tempo of the game a bit more. But you've heard a few Ron Atkinson team talks in your time, you'll know that he'll have them well wound up as well. Ah, that's right. I mean, Ron will be telling them just to keep it going, and all they've got to do is defend well now. Thanks a lot, Brian. Let's get back to our commentators, to Kevin Keegan and to Brian Moore. Thank you, Jim. And away we go for the start of the second half, then. Aston Villa leading by one goal to nil. Fenton now for Villa. Gary Pallister. Kevin Keegan saying to me at half-time how much he's enjoyed the first half and you, without wishing to hype it up too much, you think the second half is going to be even better. Well, he's got all the ingredients, I think. I mean, Man United, anyway, will go at Villa. There's no doubt about that. And Villa will continue with the tactics that have served them so well, which is the big man said, uh, Big Jack, he said they're going to break on them. And if Atkinson does start to get uh, his head on when, he, when, when to go and when not to go, and I think, to be fair, he's had to do a lot of defending that half. If he gets it right, he could get another goal here today. In the meantime, it's Villa on the break. Fenton, Atkinson is down. He was very heavily tackled by Paul Ince, I think it was. Saunders. Atkinson just about on his feet again now. Andy Townsend. Here's Atkinson. Tries to get a one-two going with Fenton. Fenton got his feet caught up. And Roy Keane can bring it away now for United. Kanchowskis. Cantona. Giggs on the far side. Giggs over on the right-hand side now. Staunton, they all come the same to him at the moment. Tony Daly, a little touch. He wanted Fenton to go for that. Townsend got there first. Oh, a lovely little ball played casually almost down the line there by Steve Staunton, but the one inside from Townsend uh, didn't match it. It's Bruce for Manchester United. Kanchelskis. Roy Keane trying to get Irwin in, but uh, Daly and Atkinson. Well, he's been effective at both ends so far this afternoon, but he uh, took too much on there. But it's with Earl Barrett now for Villa. Down the line once again towards Daly and Atkinson. Alistair peels away. I think, to be fair, anybody who knows this Wembley pitch, the way Atkinson's working. It's, it is difficult for him to get forward because it does pull at your muscles. It do, you do see a lot of people getting cramp here, and he has worked his socks off. By his standards, it's really... I mean, he's not renowned at Villa, I think, as, as the most lively player sometimes. But today, I think he's been sharp from the first minute on, and I just wonder if the old cramp might get in because uh, he certainly has worked hard. Staunton to Daly. Cross goes behind for the goal kick. A little bit of an experience there from Daly. When you break that quickly, Brian, there's absolutely very little chance, if any, of any other players breaking as quickly as, as the ball did. And he's just got to get all of it there in that situation and wait for people to, to break onto it. Today's attendance 77,231. Up goes McGrath, former Manchester United player. With distinction as well, Big Paul. 153 league games he played for United. He was at Old Trafford between 82 and 89. And Chelsea's looking to get in behind him. That's very well. Oh, a terrific bit of defending there by Sean Teal. Crucial tackle that, Brian. A little danger signs there. It was a terrific ball, and didn't he take it? He just took it in his stride, and Teal did very well, because if he'd mistimed it, it was a penalty. Pallister up for this one, the big men are up. Bruce has come up from the back as well. Curled in and fisted away with great conviction there by Mark Bosnich. Parker playing it wide again towards Giggs, still on that right-hand side. Parker again. Came off Richardson, flag up for an offside. What a great tackle this was by Sean Teal. The ball played in. Super Big ball from Bruce, wasn't it, Brian? Watch where he takes this. And this had to be perfectly timed, and it was. Sean Teal, formerly with Bournemouth. 
Townsend, Daly. Townsend again. Also, it's noticeable that neither fullback for Villa, Staunton or Barrett, have really ventured far forward. And they've kept very, very tight at the back, not taking any risks. I think Big Ron at the moment, his tactics are working just the way he dreamed they would. You know, maybe didn't didn't realise maybe they, they could work, but he, he, he must have planned this well. Oh, Bruce has done it again. Another beautiful 40-yard pass, finding Kanchelski. So now Kanchelski is finding Biggs on this side, knocked in again by him. Teal with the header clear. Keane gets there fractionally before his Republic of Ireland teammates. Andy Townsend. Another aspect of this game that's been really terrific. I mean, Alex Ferguson will be thinking about Lee Sharp. You saw a picture in there. Be wondering, should I change it? Or we've played quite well. We just haven't had the rub of the green, maybe. Shall I leave it another 10, 15 minutes? But certainly Lee Sharp, from a psychological point of view, because he scored against Villa early in the season, would be, would be the one most likely to come out the, the two on, off the bench. And scored against Arsenal uh, in the last midweek, after a long time out with injury, back and uh, obviously firing. Bruce playing it in. Hughes looking to get something on the turn. Also, Canton is waiting in the middle, and there was just a deflection off Paul McGrath. Hughes lined up that little cross. And they get a corner out of it. Giggs with it. Curled in towards Palestine. Over the top. I think there was an infringement in any case, wasn't there? Yeah, I think um, free I think they, they blocked the goalkeeper, Bosnich. Lovely corner in. Keeper starts to come, and I think you'll find he gets blocked by one of his own players, actually. Oh, no, by Hughes. Quite right. Good decision from the referee. It's been a good game. There's only been 12 fouls so far, Brian. And when you think of what's at stake here, European plays for, for Aston Villa, their only chance. And the start of a treble for Man United. I think it's been a great compliment to both sets of players. Up towards Daly. Parker cuts it out. McGrath with a header for Villa. Fenton battling away with Bruce, gets the better of him, but no, there was a handball by Fenton. Free kick. Staunton cuts that out. Not as comfortably as he uh, might have done. And Lee Sharp and Brian McClare. McClare's got a terrific record in this competition. He's probably responsible more than anybody for getting them in, yet he's still only on the bench. Four, Four goals this season. He also scored the winner in the final here against Nottingham Forest in 92. And I think was man of the match that uh, day as well. Here's it. Picks out Keane. Who in turn picks out Kanchelskis. Who's shadowing him and he's shaken the both off Kanchelskis over the line. Terrific little run again from Kanchelskis. Just just took it too far. But he's proved to be a real handful in the Premier League this year. And I think he's come of age. Great run. Staunton caught flat-footed. And he just has another touch, unfortunately. And he can't quite get there. And now Barrett. Richardson through the legs of Irwin that time. Atkinson from Saunders gets it back again. Gets it back again this time from Townsend. Looks it wide to test the legs of Daly, but Parker gets it back to Seeley. They don't need to well, test the legs Peter of Schmeichel, Parker. Uh, sorry, uh, Kevin, Peter Schmeichel there. Gary Walsh just ahead of him, who's a sub. Yeah. 
course, Manchester United back here in a fortnight's time for a semi-final against Oldham. Schmeichel will be back for that, but Canton will be missing through suspension, and so too will Roy Keane. Canton, who misses five games with his two sendings off, and Roy Keane, who has totted up enough yellow cards to miss one game, which happens to be the semi-final. Parker, that's not a bad ball, Keane chasing it. Richardson uh, shadowing him really well. Kanchoskis. Side Staunton. And obviously, uh, Ron Atkinson has told Daly, whenever Kanchoskis gets on the move, you've got to get back there and help, even if you lose the boot in the process. Kanchoskis again for Manchester United, they got a corner. Reflected off Staunton. They've really worked very hard, Aston Villa. And, you know, sort of things, questions you've got to ask yourself. They've got four or five, maybe six players over 30. Is that going to have an effect late on in the game? Although I don't think so, because they've, they've knocked it around well. Giggs with the corner. Oh, Osnich completely missed his punch. And he's got a punch on him. You asked Sean Teal in uh, training yesterday, right at the end of training, they thought for a moment he may have broken Sean Teal's nose with one of his punches, but uh, he just hit the air there and nothing else. Very difficult balls for goalkeepers to come for. You saw the dip on that ball, and I don't envy him his job. A lot of bodies around, a lot of players, not just your own players, the opposition as well. Still only 22, uh, Mark Bosnich. Pallister with a header. McGraw with one in return. Pallister up to Hughes. Tried to get it forward to Kanchelskis, but instead it fell for Cantona. Keane, some good play here. Roy Keane, will he go all the way? Ince goes down. Look for a penalty. In fact, they all were appealing. The referee, Keith Cooper, just turned away, and Villa started setting up an attack of their own. It's with uh, Dean Saunders. Keen. There's a gap there. It's down Cantona. Parker. Kanchelskis. A lot of good movement for Manchester United here, but a lot of good discipline defending by Villa too. Irwin. Kanchelskis being challenged by Earl Barrett, and there's nobody quicker than Barrett, and he's got the better of Kanchelskis there, and Villa can bring forward again there, men. Daly was quick, Atkinson's there as well. Now can Daly get on the end of this? And indeed, forced wide by the challenge of Pallister. Earl Barrett. Daly. By now, United have got plenty back. Coming towards an hour played, Parker. Time just beginning to ebb away for Manchester United. Just watching Villa in the last five minutes or so, they're trying to just contain and keep what they've got. I think that's a very dangerous thing to do against Manchester United. The situation in the corner there where they could have crossed the ball. The best way to beat Man United, I think, is to get another goal. Because at 1 0, you'll be worried right until the 91st minute. Yes, we were discussing at half time the next goal will be the crucial one. If it comes Villa's way, then you don't really believe Manchester United will climb that mountain. But if it goes Man United's way, you were saying you fancy them to go on a minute. Well, psychologically, they'd be on, on the ascendancy, wouldn't they? But uh, this moment in time, you can't see where it's going to come from for Man United. Here's Richardson. It's Townsend, cut out by Pallister. 
you are starting to have doubts about Aston Villa 10 seconds before they scored so yeah, it's that sort of game with so many players of talent on the pitch I mean one little bit of brilliance from Cantona Lee Sharp coming on I think psychologically it's a good time he's got half an hour left of the game so he's got plenty of time to do some damage Giggs possibly is coming off. McGraw with the header. Barrett. Richardson. Fenton. Now Saunders. Oh, no. Fine ball there for Bainey. Taking on Panchels. This day is shot, charged away by Bruce. Charged away with his hand, I think, as well, but no appeals from uh, the Villa players because I don't think he had any chance to get out of the way. Well cleared by Pallister, as far as Earl Barrett. And a goal. Les Seagley not happy with a young lad with a Coca-Cola tracksuit on. He's, he thinks he can get it back quicker. Yes, he was angry with the ball boy, but Les Seagley is angry with most people most of the time. Yes, it's Ryan Giggs who's going off. And Lee Sharp who comes on. with a header for Villa. Up to Keane. Kanchelskis again, still hugging that right touch line. It's Kanchelskis, it's Kanchelskis. It's stopped by McGrath's challenge. Barrett gets in and gets it clear. Saunders head down chasing this one, but Bruce... Playing it wide again for Parker. I was just thinking about Earl Barrett there. He, he played against Cantona last time, as we said. He saw gigs off, and, <laughs> and his, his, his reward for that is someone like uh, Lee Sharp <laughs> coming on. He must wonder what the hell the game's about, because he has done a good job on it today on gigs. Kept him Can't very talk. quiet. Konchelskis. Benton gets it clear, but uh, hits it straight at Paul Parker. And Chilskis again on the far side, crossed in there towards it. Let it go, Hughes! Shot was charged down. Cantona looks to get a header in. Irwin plays it in again. And Villa lining up to get that one away, and it was McGrath who made the header. Now Sharp, his first real touch. Atkinson. Saunders, the little touch, just for a moment, he looked as though Townsend might have been back on his heels, there was a free kick for Villa though, foul by Roy Keane. United. 63 minutes gone. Villa still lead by Daly and Atkinson's goal. Bruce had to get long and high. Aimed at Kanchelskis. Staunton got it away. Here's Fenton. Andy Townsend. Kevin Richardson. It's a nice little touch by Fenton that time. Almost got on the end of that one as well from Saunders' little touch. Now Daly. It's Daly's cross. Seen it down as Saunders came in. And the throw out to Sharp. Mark Hughes. 
Irwin hit it straight up to Barrett. Bailey again. since Villa have last been at Wembley 1977 Football League Cup and they beat Everton eventually after a second replay but at the moment they're making the most of it but now they have some worrying to do as Cantona finds Kanchowskis and McGrath again is there just where he needed to be yeah, great, great block there but I do feel Kanchowskis could have done better with that ball he had a lot more time and uh, to, to do better. I mean, uh, I think he was pulled off of the big man, and that's where he wanted it. Here's another corner. Bosnich, Keane's getting in there. Bosnich didn't really get a firm touch on that one, so he slightly injured himself at the same time. Cantona with the cross. Oh, Bosnich and McGrath both coming and having words with each other as well. Bruce, it's out of play. But McGrath and Bosnich not best pleased with each other. I think that was just frustration from Bosnich because he didn't get the other one and got a knock. Because he's come at such a pace here, he's got absolutely no margin for error. And I don't think he can do anything else but it away. Richardson gets it clear. Pallister with the header for Manchester United. Here's young Graham Fenton. Sharps after him, and Sharp eventually wins that little tussle. Then loses it again. Means more work for Keane. Finds Bruce. Finds Parker. Parker into Cantona. Hints. Finds Kanchelskis. His concentration went again. And Fenton got in the way of Sean Teal. He won't be too happy about that. But they found uh, Saunders. But in any case, the whistle had gone for a free kick for a foul by Paul Ince. Just get the feeling, Brian, that the little things, the little one twos that's trying to play for Man United, I mean, they're, they're not coming off and they're not quite in sync today. And a little bit of frustration coming. They've got to keep the composure because. They can still get something out of this game. Here's Saunders. Barrett. Richardson. To Townsend. Teal. Now Daly. Fenton. Ooh, he's good ball there. Now Tony Daly with it, the cross coming in towards Daly and Atkins again, just a little too high for him, he's having a real wrestling match there with uh, Dennis Irwin and Manchester United get a free kick. Let's have a quick word with Gary Newborn. Yes, Brian, just a note about that substitution, you shouldn't read too much into it, it's just a matter of, of freshening it up, as Kevin was just saying, things not coming off, and uh, they've got such a good squad, of course, Manchester United, it's very easy for them to switch a player of like for another player, and that's why Sharp's on there. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't bring McClare on for his experience towards the end. I don't think they can quite believe on the United bench what has happened this afternoon. Thank you, Gary. Bruce. That's OK, one of those long passes trying to hit Kanchelskis with it, but not on this occasion. That's going to be a goal kick. You start to think ahead, Brian, now, if you're a Man United fan, you've, you've seen a 15-point lead go down to a possible zero if Blackburn were to beat them on Saturday, and that'll be another cup final for them. They're 1-0 down here with just 20 minutes left now. You start to wonder if the people who took 25-1 to 1 about not winning anything might have got a, a, a good bit of paper in their hands. It's Pallister. Offside, yes, it was uh, Saunders caught offside. 
There's been very few offsides in this match, Brian, simply because we're playing one up. It's very hard to, to catch anybody offside, you know, with a back four playing against one. Parker. You're saying at half-time, uh, the British game, when it's played like this with a lot of pace and a lot of good technique, it's, there's nothing better, there's nothing more exciting. Cantona, there's a chance here, oh, and it's gone wide. I think Richardson got a block well, on that. And it's given Lee a Sharp was right in there after a lovely knockdown from Cantona. There's the knockdown. Gone for the corner, it came off Richardson. Irwin with it, knocked away again by Richardson up to Saunders. It's Kanchelskis is going to attack. It's pushed wide. Parker. Waiting for Hughes. A lovely turn by Hughes. And the cross was just a little too long. And Fenton brings it away. Find Saunders with it. And now a terrific break is on for Aston Villa. Atkinson's gone streaming down the left for Saunders. Fenton is supporting him here, so it's not gone yet, but now it has. I felt Saunders earlier in that move could have found Atkinson. He was looking up, but in the end he decided to take Pallister on, and Pallister got in a great block. But that's the danger, catching him on the break again, and tactically, Ron Atkinson has got it spot on today for me. I'm not saying Man United have done anything wrong, they haven't, they've just played the normal way. But Villa, this is a big step up from the last three league games, that's for sure. And now Hughes. Kanchelskis on the far side. Will he keep that in play? He has. He's knocked it back in again towards Cantona. Ince is getting in there too. Looking to chip it back there. And in the end, uh, Sharp was there. Hughes was there. And the ball goes behind for the goal kick. That really sums up Manchester United's afternoon there. In this little clip, you see a great ball he gets in under under duress, really, and it's taken by, I think, in the end, Ince, and Ince, he turns it back. Great ball, but two of them, they're getting each other's way, I think. Look, one going into the other. And that sort of, in a nutshell, has been a little bit of a problem for Man United today. But if you're also, if you're a United fan, there have just been two little moments there in the last couple of minutes. The Lee Sharp block and the moment to go just there, where United have suddenly started to make half chances again. Oh, most definitely. Since uh, Sharp came on, that's been, given them a little boost, and, and they, they've started to knock it around a little bit better and with a little bit more urgency. But they find it difficult to break down this Villa defence. Well, Kanchelskis goes tumbling under a challenge from Tony Daly. No foul. Richardson gets it forward to Saunders, killed beautifully by him. In fact, there's a free kick to Villa. Well, as he was been very relaxed these last few days, but Alex Ferguson knowing that there's a real sizable job to be done by his team now with well, a little over a quarter of an hour left. Cantona. Sharp on the far side, or rather that's Kanchelskis over there. Keane is over there. Richardson, 
possibilities here for Villa. Townsend storming through the middle with Atkinson here on this right hand side. Daly. Will he take on Parker? Ooh. Free kick. Just a quarter of an hour to go now. struggling and needing a little bit of treatment. Yeah, when you're going at that pace past people and you get a little knock, it obviously it's, it, it can do untold damage. But he's got up and he's getting on with it. I think he's enjoyed his appearance at Wembley today. He's, he's had a lot of the ball and he, he's caused Parker a few problems. It's been a good duel, that one. Popped in and a goal! Saunders might well have got a touch. It was certainly... A terrific free kick there. Kevin Richardson took the free kick. And they are 2 0 ahead. Let's see who got the touch here. Yep. Well, he might look a bit lucky from that, but he's got in there, he stuck his foot out, and that's what opportunism's all about. And now they've got to climb Everest, Man United. There's Ron Atkinson acclaiming the second goal, scored by Dean Saunders. Sharp with the cross. And on the far side is Roy Keane. Kanchelskis. There's his cross. And Andy Townsend getting it away behind for the corner. Keane knocking it back in again and over the top from Mark Hughes. So inside the last quarter of an hour, the Villa go two ahead. Good ball in and Hughes has to stand in the hang in the air a little bit too long and his lack of height let him down really in the end. He's not the biggest striker in the world. Let's have a look at the goal again. Richardson played it in. Saunders, the perfect angle to show just the deflection that Dean Saunders made. Townsend and Saunders well offside. of a treble are beginning to fade as United find themselves two down Alistair playing it in Sean Teal getting it away it's been a real battle of wits off the field leading up to this game between Ron Saunders and Alec Ferguson and big Ron at the moment is winning it and Chelskis Lee Sharp And McGrath stabbing it away, Irwin playing it in again, but Teal gets it clear, but a corner. But in fact, I think there's an infringement before that will be a free kick to Villa. Neil Fox coming on. Yeah, possibly and Steve Staunton. Steve Staunton's going off. Now, whether these felt the injury that he's had for a long time he had a stomach operation uh, about five weeks ago possibly also Roy Keane caught him about five minutes ago accidentally on the far side and maybe that just tipped the balance against him but he's done a great job for Villa today he certainly look a much better balanced side when he's in there playing at left back well he's now gone off Earl Barrett has gone to left back and Neil Cox has come across here to right back Parker can United still pull this round King gets the ball up to Hughes. Mark 
Hughes. Ince let it fly up to Saunders. Daly. Townsend. Ten minutes of the game left now. McGrath. What an afternoon it'll be for Paul McGrath. After all those seasons at Manchester United, they let him go. Villa snapped him up. Actually, it was Ron Atkinson who brought him over about 12 years ago from Ireland. Cost £25,000 when he took him to uh, Manchester United. And he's been fantastic again tonight, Kevin, uh, today. Yeah, he's just been the rock, rock solid in the back of the defence there. Him and Teal, to be fair. Yeah. In fact, every single player at Villa has responded to Ron Atkinson. Uh, we call them awful, we call them useless. And on the last three games, that's what they were. But they've been magnificent today, Brian. Every man's contribute to this. They've worked so hard. Nobody more so than Atkinson, who, for me, as I said to you before, it doesn't come that naturally to him. But he's done it today, and he looks a far better player. Tony Daly to Kevin Richardson. Townsend playing it forward to Saunders. Ince can bring it away for Manchester United. Sharp. Some good challenging there as well by Cox. Now Fenton. The break could be on again for Aston Villa. He's got Saunders away on one side. He's got Daly and Atkinson through the middle, and he plays it for Saunders. Forced across the line. No foul. Here come Manchester United. And the afternoon started so brightly for Manchester United. It was never a foregone conclusion, but it looked as though in that opening ten minutes, quarter of an hour, as though it might be a match they could take in their stride. Well, they've been jolted very thoroughly out of their stride by a really gutsy and talented performance by Aston Villa. Kanchelskis. They claim a handball, but they get a corner. Well, the Villa chairman, Doug Ellis, up in the director's box in the centre there. Yeah, he's seen and Europe on the right. Way. Absolutely. And well, they had a little spell in Europe this year until they lost to Deportivo of Spain. Here's a corner for Manchester United. Floated deep at this time. And another one. Sean Teal got that one away. I suppose when you look at Man United, I mean, Cantona's not been a force at all in the second half, and you wonder whether the events of the last week maybe have caught up with him. He's so inspirational for them. Owen curling this one in, Bosnich going for it, gets a fist to it, knocked back by Mark Hughes! Wow! Oh. Is, is there another twist, Brian? Maybe we've been writing the obits a little too early. Keane smashes the ball back in. Hughes gets two bites of the cherry, and that's all he needs. Terrific finish. So, Villa 2, Manchester United 1. Mark Hughes giving Manchester United a terrific lifeline now, and Alec Ferguson knows it well, as there are, what, six and a half minutes to go. Another substitution, McClare's coming on. And Bruce is going off. Well, there's not, you don't, goal, goal difference doesn't count in these sort of competitions, Brian. So the captain is off, and the lucky League Cup charm, Brian McClare, is on. Villa just banging that one away. It was young Graham Fenton right back there at the heart of it all. And just listen to those United fans now. Irwin. Sharp. Irwin. Lee Sharp again. Irwin gets a cross in. Knocked back by Kanchelskis. And Villa really all hands to the pump back there in their own penalty area. And still it remains that way. As Irwin crosses it in again. Everybody back. Sean Teal got up and got that one away. Even Daly's right back there, just belting the ball clear to get a little bit of respite. Fenton's done well there. But Parker... Stood his ground. McClare. Here come United again. A furious finish here now. Fox gets it clear. Richardson half gets it clear. 
Daly right back in defence, up towards Saunders. Foster again. And again, Villa are hooking it away that time, Kevin Richardson. It was a purely tactical switch by Alec Ferguson there. No injury to Steve Bruce. All the questions being asked by Manchester United now, Brian, and Villa have got a really smooth test of the character. Look at the length Pallister's been able to run here. Oh, and the space now for Paul Ince to drive one in, but two men absolutely hurled him at it. Uh, but Paul Ince there. Keane. Not through again. Villa happy to let that go. They hope he's going to go for a goal kick, but it's gone for a throw. This is the goal again, Kevin. Yeah, it really, a big clash here with the goalkeeper and everybody in there. And he hits it first time, Keane. And he tries to hook it in, Mark Hughes, but he gets another bite. You can't give players of his class two chances of it. They'll always stick it in, I think. Pallister hitting it in again. Cantona in there too. And Barrett gets it up to Daly. They'll want him just to run down that line and get as near to that corner flag as he can. But he stopped. And United have come back at them again. Int hitting it long. They claim offside, and they claim... Alex Ferguson going absolutely mad over there. I mean, he's took a gamble, he's took Bruce off, just purely tactically, to try and get something, and it's worked for a minute. Can, can they do the impossible and come back from two down? Would be incredible. Ron Atkinson, on the other hand, was sat there thinking, oh, keep it... Keep him quiet for another five minutes, and we're there. He's got to bite his nails now. Daly Atkinson, a handball, it'll be a free kick. Oh, it's a throw, and it's with Irwin. Three minutes to go now. Up goes Cantona, challenged by Sean Teal. Kanchelskis. Now Parker, now we're going to get another half an hour. Extra time, of course, if United can uh, notch another one here. Hughes, oh, a fantastic save by Bosnich. An unbelievable save by Bosnich. From Mark Hughes. Did everything right, Brian. Great strike and a, an even better save. Corner for United. Long and Sean Teal puts it behind. Watch this again, Brian. This is a terrific knockdown by I think Cantona set up and he hits it so well. And look at that for a save. World class. Two minutes left. Curled in. Keane will try to get it back again. Cantona playing it in almost lazily there. Daly and Atkinson putting it away. Pallister, the little chip by him, knocked away by Fenton. Parker playing it wide. Irwin desperate to keep it in play. Knocked in long by him. Bosnich started to come and went back. Daly with a little header. Villa just can't get it away. Now Richardson will just bang it away into touch. A minute and a half to go. It's the classic we thought it would be, Brian, and it may be not over yet, this one. I mean, it's just raw drama now after so much splendid technique for so long. Irwin hitting it in long again, and Bosnich gathering it just before Cantona could get there. That was a truly memorable save by Bosnich just now from Hughes, though. Absolutely critical. A great save. I mean, Hughes did everything right. Couldn't have hit it better. But the one thing we know Bosnich is really good at, and that is shot stopping, and that's what he did. He stopped the shot brilliantly. Atkinson bringing Daly in. Against the post! Daly Atkinson! Off the line, Daly Nackins, I think he might, has he given a penalty? He's given a penalty, he's given a penalty, it was handled on the line, and Villa now have a chance now, what will happen? Well, it all happens so quick, Brian, this. Let's just have a look and see what happens to Seeley. Terrific shot, comes it's back, I think, to Atkinson, and it's handballed by... Manchelskis, I think, on the line. Well, will it be a red card? I hope not, he doesn't have to do this. Just a yellow one, please. No. 
It's red. It's a red card. Andre Kanchelskis is off. The two managers confer. The referee bound by laws which maybe he doesn't agree with. And poor Andre Kanchelskis, the man from the Ukraine, did, I suppose, what any competitor would want to do, try and in any way to stop the ball crossing a line. It is, I think, a ridiculous piece of legislation. But yes. what it does mean is that Villa have a chance to go 3-1 up. Kanchelskis can only watch. If you wrote a script for this game, Brian, you couldn't have written it much better. Dean Even Saunders looking for his second goal, and Villa's third. It's 3-1. complaints about the penalty he handled on the line but I think it's such a sad sad way to deal with a competitor like Andre Kachelskis or anyone for that matter it's a crazy piece of legislation and that's a great sight for Villa fans he also misses some games now for Man United before right. the end of the season Brian which is, is just collapsing all around them at the moment and they've played well today it's they've done fourth, nothing wrong the fourth red card in five games Saunders to and Atkinson, the scorers for Villa. Mark Hughes for Manchester United. What an amazing final this has been, though. Hints with the free kick. Palace scorer, Keane's going to take it. Teal with the header. The final whistle's gone. It's Aston Villa who won it. And the treble is no more. The possibility has gone out of the window here at uh, Wembley tonight as Ron Atkinson's side beats Manchester United by three goals to one. Dean Saunders with two of the goals. Damien Atkinson with the first one. Mark Hughes with one responding for Manchester United. So the dreams of an incredible treble have gone. And here's Ron Atkinson. Ron, congratulations, you were the rank outsiders and you really got your act together. Yeah, we worked very hard. We had a plan where we, you know, a way of playing. It was a little bit of a change from our normal way. We stuck at the task. We showed character when they came back at the end. I mean, the last 10 minutes seemed like an hour. And in all fairness, uh, full marks to us. Actually, you said the last 10 minutes seemed like an hour. That Bosnich save was so crucial. Instead of 2-1, you went on to make it 3-1. Magnificent, brilliant save. Nearly as good as that, that Woodward. Now, <laughs> now, for Manchester United, of course, they still have two other things, but this is so important for Villa. First time back for 17 years for you as manager in a place in Europe now. It's important for those people, all that lot down there. Important for our chairman, he's earned it. It's important for everybody. Okay. We're going to have a few drinks tonight. OK, we? and it was a great game as well. A great uh, game as well. We enjoyed it. Yeah. Well done. And so Villa equal a record of Liverpool and Nottingham Forest of four wins in this competition. And remember, Big Ron came here with Sheffield Wednesday in 1991 and beat Manchester United. He's come here in 1994 with Aston Villa and he's beat Manchester United. And Alec Ferguson commiserating there with Andre Kanchelskis. Well, it, they played the part in a terrific game. I, I know that'll only be a scant consolation to them. But wasn't it played in the right spirit? It was a terrific game. We've had a player sent off. There's not been a bad tackle in the game. Possibly just one half a bad one. And uh, I think on the day, uh, the best team I, won. I think Doug Ellis is not far short of a few tears there. Well, he's been there a long time and he's, he's seen a lot of comings and goings. But it's terrific to come here and win anything, but to take part in a game like that, he must be thrilled. I think they just edged it over 90, but uh, it, it was a great game. Let, let's have a word with Dalian Atkinson. Dalian, that first goal set you on your way. What an afternoon for Villa. Delighted. No words, I can't really say, but everyone was delighted. It's fantastic. The first time here had a win. What can I say? Well, the team did, went into this final not looking as if it was going to be in the right mood, but it certainly proved to be that you were in the mood. I said to you before the game, it's different than the league, it's a one-off game, and if we prepare right and we do the job right, we come out on top, and that's what we've done. Brilliant. OK, well done, enjoy it. Thanks very much. 
loses go up first. There was no losers in this game for me, Brian. It was just a terrific advert for our game, you know. It, it really was. Played at Wembley, the home of British football, English football, if you like. And uh, there were no losers. And United come back here in a fortnight's time to play Oldham in a semi-final of the FA Cup. Mark Hughes leading him up. And Steve Bruce, of course, I beg your pardon, the captain, of course, was substituted. The man of the match is normally chosen by uh, journalists on this day for the Alan Hardacre Trophy. And I understand it's Kevin Richardson, an excellent choice. Yeah, difficult choice. There were so many players on both sides who, who, who had a chance to win it, but I think they made the right choice. He's the engine room. He worked his socks off along with everybody else in the midfield. I thought Atkinson pushed him very close. Maybe Bosnic even for that one save. So a great disappointing, uh, a great disappointment there for Manchester United. But two with two, with two things to play for, the FA Cup and the Premiership. But for Villa, it's a triumph on the day. And the man of the match, Kevin Richardson, leads his team up, knowing that they are back in Europe next season. What an amazing turnaround, that save by Bosnich at the end from Mark Hughes, which would have made it 2-2, and then right bang at the other end, 3-1. His family up in the northeast will be drinking a few Newcastle Browns tonight, Brian. Terrific display from him. I think he, he led them from the front, didn't he? He won championships with Arsenal and with Everton. And now lifts up the Coca-Cola Cup for Aston Villa. Villa the winners. Well, he's held most things today. He certainly isn't going to drop that. Kevin Richardson also with the Alan Hardacre trophy. Alan Hardacre, a former secretary of the Football League, whose brainchild this League Cup competition was back in 1961 when it started. Villa now winners for the fourth time. People always say it can't rival the FA Cup, but if the FA Cup final this year is three quarts as good as that, Brian, then we'll settle for it. What a triumph too for Ron Atkinson. I mean, tactically and in terms of man management of lifting men who lost their previous three games, a fantastic yeah. triumph for him. Yeah, I think he's, he, he comes out of it with the sort of credit he deserves. I mean, their tactics on the day were right. If Cantona had destroyed him, having left him free without a man-to-man -man marker, he would have been criticised. But it's worked for him on the day. They broke on Man United, and they thoroughly deserved to win in the end. But it took him a long time to get the, the upper hand.